All right, Mike Giver has a very good question here. He says, can you explain in Genesis 1 verse 2, there is water in the universe surrounded by the Spirit of God before the creation story. Genesis 128 replenished the earth. See Job 38 and Jude. Lucifer in heaven, yet Satan in the Garden of Eden. No change in position change. No change in position change. Uh, time passed. Well, let me see if I can answer that uh, to the best of my ability. First of all, let's go to Genesis 1 and take a look at the, the spirit, the water. Let's see. Let's just read it first. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. All right, and so your question is, uh, water in the universe surrounded by the Spirit of God before the creation story. Well, this is the creation. This is not before the creation. This is the creation. All right, we know that because of verse 5, and God called the light day, and darkness he called night, and evening and the morning were the first day. Okay, so this is all, oops. This is all the first day. All right, and so if I can understand the question, water in the universe surrounded by the Spirit of God before the creation story. So if I could understand, if I'm understanding okay, yeah, verse 2, and the earth was without form. This means, uh, this is just the way I look at it, the way I imagine it, if you will. Um, the earth being without form basically means um, what it says, I guess. Um, there wasn't, uh, the, w the earth is formed now because of the flood. So we have mountains rivers and all that so my uh, my guess is that it was just uh, plain dirt and there were no trees no you know vegetation no animals nothing didn't have any vo uh, form to it and uh, darkness being upon the face of the deep means there was no light on the waters and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So if the way I see this is the Spirit of God is what makes or creates all the stuff that we're reading in Genesis 1. All the vegetation, all the animals, the sun, moon, stars, the Spirit of God made it all. All right, and it parallels John 1, verse 1. So, to me, it's interesting. If you look at, like, say, um, um, you know, insects, for example, you, you know, you think about how much man has evolved technologically, yet the most brilliant top scientists in the world cannot recreate a living organism that can reproduce itself think about that so it's amazing really you know a scientist the sign the very smartest scientist in the world cannot recreate the ant or uh, you know they can they can copy an ant by using ant parts right I mean that's there's nothing magical about that but they cannot reproduce or they cannot create their own insect if you will and have it reproduce itself we are nowhere near as smart and intelligent as god almighty not even close we never will be we never have been never will be all right so but this is to me this is the example of um, the spirit of god making all this possible even you yourselves are living and breathing because of the spirit of god all right, all the anim the the plants, the animals, everything is because of the Spirit of God, and it was created in the beginning, and it 
it, it is still, it will always be, but it's still very much as part of the world that we're living in now as it was when it was created. Okay, so the Spirit of God makes everything possible, it makes all the living organisms possible, you know, plant life, animal life, and all that. And so, this says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. So, without God, there would be no light. All right, and so on and so forth. I'm not sure if that's, um, you know, uh, satisfactory for what you're looking for. And then verse 28, God says, replenish um, just the earth, just meaning, oh, excuse me, just means uh, to fill up the earth. Uh, let's see if we can do this here. Okay, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So, um, you know, fill the earth with uh, babies, and animals, and, uh, you know, um, harvest, you know, uh, what, how would you say that, fields, you know, farms. Uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. Just the world is uh, yours to take advantage of, right? So, anyway, so I think that covers that. And then uh, Job 38 and Jude. Lucifer in heaven, yet Satan in the Garden of Eden. No change in position. Okay, so... The Bible never says, let me see, let me see if I can go to Isaiah and just sort of clarify what Lucifer is, okay? Okay, so if we see here, the only time, here, I should have done it this way. Okay, the name Lucifer, one time in the, in the entire Bible. It's Isaiah 14, verse 12. The only time the Bible mentions the name Lucifer. Okay, and if we go up here, right there it is. And if you, know, if you read verse 4, in Isaiah 14 it says take thou or I'm sorry thou sh I'm sorry that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say and then keep scrolling down here how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning all right so this is a proverb against the king of Babylon it's not actually saying there is a Lucifer. It's just saying it's a proverb. It's part of this proverb that was instructed to take up against the king of Babylon. All right, not, it doesn't say anything about it. And it. You know, it's amazing that Lucifer is such a popular name. This is the only time it's mentioned in the entire Bible, and it's a proverb against the king of Babylon. So it doesn't make any mention of an actual Lucifer. You know, people making way too big of a deal out of Lucifer. Okay. So when you say Lucifer in heaven, this is, you're talking about this proverb against the king of Babylon. Okay. In context. And then Satan in the Garden of Eden, I think is fair because it says the serpent is more subtle than any creature that the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, uh, or asked, you know, basically, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said, nope. And so, anyways, uh, and the serpent, and we can identify the serpent with Satan. If we go uh, specifically to... Revelation 
12 and Revelation 20. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, right? And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. All right, so that's fair to say that no change in position change. So that it is, it's going to change in the sense of, um, let's see if we can, let's go this way. Revelation, let's see, Revelation, okay, so let's go right there, Revelation 20, 14, I think is the best verse, death and hell cast into the lake of fire, okay, so basically that is saying I guess you have to uh, take everything into consideration. The old serpent, the devil and Satan, the old dragon. All right, they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. All right, all of that is going away. All right. And so there, there's no more death, no more hell, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more crying, no more death. And so that there will be a change in that regard. But I wouldn't say they hold a position, or I wouldn't say the dragon, serpent, devil, Satan holds a position, a position of power. He doesn't have a throne he sits on not comparable to God at all. Okay, again, that would be uh, imagination. Okay, so like say for example, let's see if I can find this verse. Oh, I'm going to have to, is it going to let me get to that? There we go. Let's see. It's going to be right there. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Okay, this is not talking about uh, a spirit entity, if you will. This is talking about um, basically a man's seat. A man has taken place of a uh, representative of Satan, if you will. Okay, it's not an actual entity, it's an actual man. Okay, and then I could give you examples of men being called Satan, and so on and so forth. So there's not a, like a spiritual entity uh, like God who... Who has his own throne and all that sort of stuff? Okay, that doesn't not exist. Okay, if um, well, how do I say this? Uh, if um, well, I, I better not say that. Okay, so we'll just leave it at that. All right, no time passed. Okay, so basically everything has changed. All right, so I'm gonna do. A video on Genesis 6. Um, somebody mentioned something I thought about Genesis 6. I read it somewhere. Somebody said something. Let's see. Well, it doesn't matter. So I'll get to that next. Okie doke. Alright, good enough.